Good morning. <clears throat> Are we missing something here today? Did the rapture happen? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> well, a reading of God's word today is in Acts 2, 17 through 21. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and billows of smoke. The sun will turn. Okay, does that sound good? And here comes our Verla May. <laughs> Thank you for y'all being here. Y'all? Did I say y'all? Wow. Anyway, uh, huh? I've been around your parents too much. Um, I'm really blessed to be here before you this morning. And uh, it's a real thrill for me to be up here, and Alan has all the faith in me in the world, which is a real blessing to me. He's a wonderful mentor. He uh, sends me little things now and then, and says, oh, just a suggestion for your sermon, you know. And so there are going to be a few of the suggestions that Alan gave me for my sermon, and then a lot of it's going to be mine, and then just, you know, whatever comes out of my mouth from the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Last week, we talked about the church as a movement to move us ahead in our worship and to worship to others. And I don't think we've heard the last of that yet because I know what the next um, sermon's about. <laughs> Not mine, the next one. So in this morning, we're gonna be talking about the Great Commission, which Alan touched on a little bit last week, and also about the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 18, or 28, 16 through 20, is the, whole, is the Great Commission, and we'll get to that in just a minute. As a second volume to Luke's gospel, the book of Acts joins what Jesus began to do and teach as told in the gospels and with what he continued to do and teach through the apostles, preaching and the establishment of the church. The Great Commission, as was mentioned earlier, is the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountains where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
That is just amazing. And it's, it's worth being repeated over and over again until we get it right. Just, it's just wonderful. I love it. This all started with 11 of the most unlikely group to carry this out. Carpenters, fishermen, tax collectors, and the likes. And it all started on a hill. Many things happened between the Great Commission and the Pentecost. Parables and healings, feeding of the 5,000, Jesus walks on water, and many other accomplishments and miracles. When the day of Pentecost came, this is in Acts 2, 1 through 8, and 12 and 13. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from the heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem. Now they are staying in Jerusalem where God fearing Jews from every nation under the heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd, ca crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazing, they asked. Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our language? Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Peter says these people are, are drunk, as you, Peter says these people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. And as Merle read in Acts 2, 17 through 21, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I would just like to stop for just a moment and welcome our Verla May back. It's so good to see you, sweetheart. Good to see you. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Coming off hip surgery, that's, that means a lot to me. Acts 2, 36 through 41. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God had made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt, corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 of them were added to their number that day. Just wondering, uh, the corruption in that days and what the corruption is today, what a great difference. What a great difference. Jesus began what we need to continue through his guidance through the Holy Spirit. Have you yielded to the Spirit to be used? Do you really believe? People that realize what Jesus is all about really don't need any motivation to tell about Jesus. I know I sure don't. I'm on fire for that man, I'll tell you what. It's amazing. Doesn't matter who you are or where you are. You may not have the gift of an evangelist, but you certainly can witness anywhere, anytime. Some of my best spiritual conversations have been in the grocery store. Wear something that makes them know you are a Christian like jewelry or t-shirts that have Christian sayings on them to encourage a conversation. Don't be ashamed. Jump right in there and try. The Spirit will lead you. Don't wait. Time is of essence. What is your spiritual gift? 
There are so many ways to serve, just to mention a few. Hospitality, singing, landscaping, kitchen, snacks, Sunday school, and many, many more. Don't waste your spiritual gift. Use it. It's a great gift that you have received, and you don't want to let, let it pass by. Jesus said we are greater than John the Baptist because we have seen what he has done. Jesus is the way to salvation, the gift of everlasting life with him. Jesus makes the difference. We have some folks out on the walk this weekend, and um, I did the walk um, a year ago last October, and it was one of the most fabulous experiences I've ever done in my life. It was a wonderful thing. It was so much full of prayer and praise and fellowship and, and uh, persons from every denomination were there. It was just a wonderful thing. And I'm real anxious to go down this afternoon and see the closing and, and share that with the people. We, I think we have like uh, six, five or six ladies from Bonner's Ferry that are in the, in the walk this week. So just to see them come out of there glorified the way they're gonna be is just, it's amazing. It's so exciting. And here's some of the little, little uh, excerpts I got from Alan. And uh, my, my sermon may be short, and I think it's going to be, or it may be longer if I just start yakking. Who knows? But um, I haven't quite got that part perfected yet, the timing. But I just say what I want to say and just be done with it. And this came from Alan. It was a man, uh, C.S. Lewis, said this. A car is made to run on petrol and it would not run properly on anything else. Now God designed the human machine to run on himself. He himself is the fuel our spirits were designed to burn, or the food our spirits were designed to feed on. I like that a lot. Without the spirit of God, we can do nothing. We are ships without the wind, branches without sap, and coals without fire. We are useless. A man named Charles Spurgeon came up with that one. Although we cannot see the Holy Spirit, we should be able to sense his work in our lives, changing us into the image of Christ. When D.L. Moody was just starting in the ministry, he heard a preacher make this statement, the world has yet to see what God can do with one man fully surrendered to him. Moody that night said, by God's grace, I hope I'll be that man. Many times we have the excuse of not enough time to turn to Jesus. But Jesus was busy, and look what he accomplished. Let me see where I'm at here now. Oh, it looks like it is gonna be short. That's okay. <laughs> the thoughts, last thoughts I wanna leave you with actually is, he gave us his one and only son for our sins. And the best we can do is just give him a couple hours a week. No. And I'm just as guilty of that as anybody else. Um, the prayer that you need to do, the, the spirit that's in you. And um, like I said, my spirit is, is so alive. When I was typing my sermon yesterday, I was just, I couldn't hardly contain myself. My heart was just beating and my soul was just flying around. And that was a good thing. That was a good thing. And I shared that with Alan, and he said, that's a spirit thing, Polly. That's a spirit thing. So anyway, I, that's about it, all I've got for today. And um, I thank you for listening, and I hope someone got something out of that. And um, like I said, I'm early. Uh, did I beat you yet, um, Mike? No? Oh, okay, good. Thank you anyway, and uh, you have a great week, and we're going to sing another song, and then we'll be even for snacks. Thank you so much. hope I didn't leave anything else. <laughs>